Steam Deck again. Do you want to know how to keep your Steam Deck cool while increasing performance at the same time? Increase the GPU memory from 1 to 4 GB in 10 seconds? Wanna make your screen look as vibrant as an OLED screen? Wanna know the easiest way to solve most of the issues with the Steam Deck? Plus, how to preserve your battery? Do you know how to use the back buttons properly? Mm -hmm. I'm Jacques of all trades and in this video I will teach you some tips about the Steam Deck you probably never heard of. Let's start by installing Decky Loader on your Steam Deck. Decky is an open source free software, kudos to the creators, which allows you to very easily install other plugins on your Steam Deck. Most of them are very useful and we are going to be using some of them. Okay guys, first thing I will teach you how to set up a sudo password for your deck because you're going to need it. Now with your deck started, open up the Steam menu, go to power, switch to desktop. Wait for a few seconds. Once in the desktop mode, hit the application launcher, go to settings and then system settings. From here, zoom this in for you. Go to the users and you will see something similar to this. You click change password, you type in the new password, then you hit set password. Now you're ready to install Decky Loader. Just follow the steps I'm showing you. Open up the browser you're using and in Google type in Decky Loader. Click on second side and hit download. Now once that's downloaded, double click it. Hit continue. It will ask you for the password you just set. Here, make sure to choose release. There you go. Now, restart your Steam Deck. Hit the application launcher again, hit restart, and let's wait for a few seconds. Now, you might have noticed that the camera quality changed suddenly. I'd like to apologize. Um, my girlfriend wants to take some pictures with the camera, so I had no choice on the matter. Okay. Once your deck is restarted, press the three dots on the right of your deck. And you will see this new icon right here. So here you can choose different plugins to install. And let's start by one of the most important plugins in my opinion, which is Power Tools. And you can either search or just browse them and you will browse for Power Tools. Let's go find it. Oh. There's a bunch of new ones I haven't seen. So we have Power Tools here. Uh, install and now we have it installed. Let me move my camera back here now now how does power tools work let's say i have started a game so we have a few different options but the most important thing for me is this option right here so this is the maximum speed of your processor and what it does is most of the games don't need your maximum speed but you're limited to a certain amount of power because they have made this thing power efficient has a limited power draw and the idea is to save battery life what happens here is that you're using a lot of this power for your cpu on this max speed setting and if you lower it you will first lower the temperature of the processor big time for me it lowers it with about from 5 to sometimes 10 degrees celsius 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 10 10 degrees celsius but also it will allow more power to go for the gpu so if you lower this you will not only lower the temperature you will increase often the performance of your games what i usually do when you go down here those are a bunch of things you can explore them you can limit the charge uh this would mean that you can limit the maximum charge to 90 or 80 percent and this is new this wasn't here before this is great i would always use this i'm so happy i found it now because this will limit the charge of the battery to 80 percent preserving your battery for a longer time this way okay so back to the topic persistent profile is something you might want to activate this is so you can have different options for different games just make sure that uh this is always set to 80 if you care about this let me just show you here 
Let me go in the game. Let me activate my side panel. See if we can see it. We need the temperatures here. So, okay. Let's start some heavy game. Something that will draw more power and heat up the deck. I've booted up Elden Ring. It's a little bit heavier, so I decided to boot this one up. It runs fine, as you can see. We are sitting around 80 to 85 degrees. Before, that didn't used to be the case. I remember this game pushing around 90, 91, 92, even more. I guess with all of the updates from Steam, now we're running a little bit cooler, which is nice. Nice. But still, we can see on default settings, uh, we have about 80 to 85, 86 degrees Celsius. Now, let's go to power tools and let me show you why this feature is so good keep in mind that it's a cold day right now i have my favorite rope on if i have this on it means it's cold that also will affect your steam deck's performance how much it heats up let's go to power tools and as you can see we have the maximum now which is 3.5 now i will lower it to about 2.5 maybe it depends on the game if you see performance decrease it means it's too low you can find a nice balance between not impacting performance maybe even increasing it and lowering the temperatures let me move my cat from here i'll go right here let's go with 2.8 for instance and see if there, the performance is nice as you can see 40 frames pretty consistent i would say 78 degrees the power consumption dropped with about 2 to 4 watts so that's nice also it's gonna give us a longer play time so that's it that's the most useful feature of power tools i use it in every game it doesn't matter if the game performs fine if it's a light game if it's a light game i will lower it just so i can save more battery life you can have your profiles for each game so you will go down here persistent profile and this will save this profile for this game so when i run this game this will automatically turn on and the settings i have applied will apply to this game only i recommend with this new feature we just found out to limit the charge for every profile if you're using persistent profiles to 80 percent that's my so that's it that's power tools let's now move to another tool the next one i want to show you and it's one i'm using all the time that's vibrant deck uh, you can find it again on the market here it looks like this and I cannot show you the effect by mirroring the screen here because it's applying the effect only to the Steam Deck. So I will disconnect the Steam Deck and show you the difference in colors. What this does is it changes the colors. It makes them more vibrant and I love it. So let me disconnect the deck here and I will switch to a full camera and show you how this looks on my deck with the default settings. And then when I apply some of this saturation increase right here, this is the option right here you need. So this is the default setting this is how the colors look in game so this this is how the colors usually look now let me apply about I'm a snake. 170 so the default is 100 let's go to 170 right here let's move to 100 even a 50 is nice i like in 70 depending on the game now check the colors out So that's Vibrant Deck. Uh, it has more options in it. Let me reconnect it real quick here. So it has more options. You can play with the colors a little bit. One by one from here. You can check the options out. You can use per game profiles if you want. You can have one global profile. Each game can have different profiles. An awesome tool. Works as intended. To show you this next one. This is to increase your vram to four from one gigabytes it helps some games gain a lot of performance so first thing you have to do you will press up hold it and then hold start wait for the beep hold a little longer let go of the power button now so now here you will go to setup utility you will scroll down to advanced in advanced you go where it says uma frame buffer size which is this one just switch it to four gigabytes go to exit exit saving changes yes and that's it now you have four gigabytes of vram so now how to check if everything is all right if you go here and if you go on settings system and you go down here you're going to see your ram size is now 12 gigabytes and the UVRAM size is 4 instead of 1 gigabyte. Now, as last time, 
We're going to press volume up and power at the same time and hold them. Wait for a second, release. Again, we're going to go to utilities down here. We'll go to power and we're going to enter battery storage mode from here. You hit yes and now you're in battery storage mode. If you try to start the deck, it will just blink like this until you connect it to a power source. This is to preserve battery, but also this will help you solve most of the issues that are not solved by restarting the deck. A lot of people are using the back buttons right here the wrong way, especially people like me that used to have the Steam and still have the Steam controller. They would pull here and pull on the side. What you should do instead is you press down as if you're trying to press on the deck like this. So you're just pressing down. You're not pulling on the side. You're just pressing towards the Steam Deck. It's so fast. I'm even using this for jumping. I'm using uh, this one for sprinting here. I'm using all of these buttons because it's so easy to use them. So I hope that was helpful to you. And the last thing I want to teach you how to change your brightness quickly. So you have two options now. One is here, which is... Um, I guess fast enough, but you have to pull out this interface. The other one is in the settings. You go to settings, go to display, and up here you change the brightness. But maybe you know this shortcut, maybe you don't. While in game, you can hold the Steam button right here and press up or down and hold the left joystick. For up it will increase, you can even go like this, and for down. So this is a very quick way to lower or adjust your brightness. That's it for this video guys. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Also if you know any other useful tips, leave them in the comments below so others can learn, so I can learn from you. And also if you stream games to your Steam Deck from your PC, make sure to watch this video right here which will teach you how to set that up, the best settings for the best experience when streaming games to your Steam Deck from your PC. Bye guys.